let's <laughs> let's do this. Hopefully I have everything and my radiators won't be loud. Fingers crossed. Let's get into it. Take 59. <laughs> What's good, peacemakers? Welcome back to another episode of the Peace for Peace Crafting Podcast. I'm Michael, and this is my crafty corner of the YouTube universe. If you would like to find me on other social media, you can do so by following me over on Ravelry as Peace for Peace Craft or on Instagram as Peace for Peace Crafting. If you are a fan of music, you can follow the Peace for Peace Crafting Podcast playlist. You have to have playlist in the word or in the title. Uh, to follow along to music recommendations that I give out at the end of the podcast. That's it. What's up, everyone? For those of you returning, welcome back. And if this is your first time clicking on one of my videos, welcome. I hope that you enjoy the content that is provided here. <laughs> How's everyone doing? It's been two weeks. I actually can't remember when I recorded last, if it was on the weekend or if it was also on a Monday. So I'm recording Monday. Today is February 27th, question mark, probably. I can't believe that the month has sort of flown by, in my opinion. Um, I feel like everything's happening very quickly, but we've been through this already. Um, but yeah, my two weeks has been sort of jam-packed. I always working like most of us <laughs> gotta get that money to buy the things um and my housemates and other friends were performing so i went to go see two of their performances and then this weekend or this past weekend i should say i was supposed to record but took a little road trip with a buddy of mine to memphis tennessee so i'm in chicago so that's like sort of directly below us because um, he used to dance for a company there, and so we went to go and see them perform over the weekend, drove out Friday, saw the show Saturday, it's also like everything's happening quickly, and then uh, drove back on Sunday. It's about a nine hour drive, and I uh, was not asked to drive. I offered multiple times. They were like, no, it's cool, don't worry, like, I'm I'm in the zone. So I got to sit and craft for the majority of the time. And I had the aux cord per their recommendation. And so we listened to podcasts, we listened to music, I knit for a bit, hung out, had snacks, did the whole road tripping thing. It was great. It was really lovely. Um... Yeah, just to go down there, got to go to <clears throat> um, like B.B. King's Cafe or restaurant. I don't remember what it was called. Anyway, there was live music, which was really awesome. Just to hear like a house band play, great music, um, wonderful instrumentation that evening. Um, and we also went to... The Lorraine Motel, which is where um, Dr. King was shot. And we didn't do like the museum because uh, we kind of didn't have time. We had other things that we needed to get to, but it was really interesting to like stand outside and like see where that all took place. It was a very somber moment um, and a good way to sort of wrap up um, Black History Month here in the States. <laughs> um, yeah, so definitely worth the, the trip going to see that, but also I would love to go back down so I could do the museum because I feel like that would be a really dope experience just to like go through that in that city. Um, yeah, so other than that, things have been good. 
Um, yeah. Should we get into some fun stuff? <laughs> I get really awkward when I have to talk about myself. Um, first things first, in the last episode, because we reached 3,500 subscribers, I said that there was going to be a giveaway and Caleb of Drowning in Yarn so graciously donated five um, codes for, which I said wrong the last time, for his app Yarn Store. Now this is for iOS devices and it is a way for you to keep track of your yarn stash. It's really cool, you can take photos of things, put weights and stuff like that in there and just help manage your stash that way if that's something that you might be into. This is really cool for people who may not, um, Ravelry may not be accessible to them and so they're looking for a better way to just like manage the stuff that we have around our homes, in garages, in um, a bread box in the kitchen that's not being used, but it is now a stash holder. Uh, <laughs> just like other fun, silly places that you may be hoarding, or excuse me, stashing, hoarding's probably right, yarn. Um, and so I have reached out to those five people. So anyone who commented um, yarn stash in the last video, um, five people were selected. I reached out to all of them. I'm still waiting to hear back from two. Um, and those people are, I'm just gonna give first names cause like, I don't know if you want me giving your government name out here like that, but Star and Dasha, correct me if I'm saying that name incorrectly. Um, those two I have not heard back from yet. So hopefully you will see this video if you did not see that I responded to you on the last video. And you can reach out to me um, either via email or um, on Instagram if you have Instagram. And I will make sure to send your information over to Caleb so that you can get the code so that you can try um, the app for free, which is really awesome. So thank you, Caleb, for doing that. And thanks to all of you for subscribing, telling friends. Um, yeah, just trying to build our little community that, <laughs> that we have here. Um, yeah, so that's the only like fun thing I have to talk about. I think that's really cool. I never expected to even get five subscribers. So the fact that there are 3,500 of you, even if you don't watch every two weeks, but maybe you let a few weeks go by and then you have some time. Trust me, I understand life happens. I definitely get backed up on uh, other people that I like watching and then some time will magically appear and I'll just sit down and I'll binge a bunch of things. Like, yeah, it's really great. All right, so today's episode, I have three FOs, two works in progress and a couple little stash enhancement things because I traveled, I had to get something that was local. We can talk about that later. So let's get into it. Um, my first FO is I finished my vanilla socks. What? So these are Knit Picks Felici, uh, and so that's a fingering weight, and these this is in the color Bookshop. I used two balls, and each of those are 218 yards for 50 grams. Uh, I do my socks on a US 1, so that's a 2.25, and I do them toe up. Um, I increase to 68 stitches and then I just go, 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 go. I do an afterthought heel. Um, yeah, these almost match until the top of this one needed a little bit of the next stripe to go into it. So I was kind of bummed, but not really, cause it's like, whatever, no one's gonna see that anyway. Um, but I do like the way that I matched up this stripe to the start of the heel to get that in there. These are really cute. Um, I actually really like these colors a lot. I think they're super fun. And another pair of socks to add to my little bin of socks that I'm creating. Um, I've said on here before, like I really want to 
in my normal life so like when i'm not out in schools and teaching have like a, a not a stash but like a stash of hand knit socks that i can just pop on and wear um, in my normal day today, obviously the store bots will <laughs> still be purchased because I'm, you know, take my shoes off, dancing on a gym floor or the cafeteria <laughs> floor, depending sometimes. Right. I don't really want to be wearing my hand knit socks if I don't have to in those circumstances. So these um, make for great socks in the normal parts of my life. Excited these are done. Obviously, I probably cast on another one, which we'll see in a minute. So yeah, these are Felici. I don't, did I say the name? This is Bookshop is the colorway. For this one, love, love, love. I'm really in a like, when I am going to make socks, if something's not wound up, I just like come in this room, grab two of those 50 gram skeins or balls whatever and just throw them in my backpack um, with a set of needles and go i'm not really like oh i want to knit this colorway now it's like okay what's available <laughs> what can i grab and make a mad dash out the door to go and catch the bus to get to where i need to go so that's that all right moving right along the next FO that I have for you all is I finished my roommate's Lento. So for those of you, maybe this is your first time watching, I told my, I um, have two housemates. I told them that I would make them something, a sweater for Christmas and they got to pick with me helping to guide them. Um, and so roommate one got a lento so that is this pattern by gonna screw up the name jonah hytala uh this was originally published in lina mac uh in lina maybe the magazine i'm not really sure um but it is a dk weight sweater and um the pattern calls for you holding a fingering weight and a mohair together. The gauge is similar to the Love Note, if you've knit that or heard of that from Tin Can Knits. And so I was knitting hers out of a Knit Picks palette, which is 100% Peruvian Highland wool, and a Loft, which is their mohair and silk. So this, it's a little wrinkled because it was folded up, but this is how that turned out. What? So for this, I um, decided that I wanted to give it a little detail. And I'd seen Tracy from the Grocery Girls do these little yarn over oh. increases along the raglan. Kendrick has something to say. And so I wanted to do something similar. I think for hers, she only has one stitch in between the yarn overs and so I did two. I started the yarn overs after I did the short row shaping for the neckline so you can see like they start a little bit lower and then this obviously is where the short rows were. I thought it made for a really nice um, more what some would consider feminine detail to the sweater although literally anyone could do this. I mean it looks really good on. I think it's really beautiful. Um, the color is lovely. I knit the body about two inches longer than what it is in the pattern. And the sleeves, I think I did two inches as well before I started the ribbing. So great thing about making your own things is everything can be customizable. She loves it. She looks great in it. And now that I'm showing it, <laughs> she can have it and actually wear it instead of just trying it on for me to see if it looks okay. Yeah, I'm super excited about this. I thought it was such a fun knit. It went by really fast. Also, she's a smaller human. So um, knitting things for her goes really fast, um, which is really exciting. Um, so I was really happy to get that off the needles and can give that to her. And now I can start the other project that I need to start for my other roommate soon, which, yeah, we can talk about that more in a little bit. All right, 
and now the last thing I have for you all is I finished my light festival sweater this is a sweater oh here I can show you the pattern it's so silly um, so this is a pattern it's the light festival sweater this pattern is by Stephen West and um, it is a worsted weight pattern so in this it says that you can do two strands of fingering held together to get a worsted gauge and one strand oh or you can do like one strand of a lace mohair and a DK together so that is what I did sort of in the original pattern it's supposed to be color blocked so there's different colors as the as the contrast and then he held a Surrey alpaca um, lace weight throughout the whole thing that gives it that blue color over the top and I decided that I wanted to do mine all in one solid color just because I thought for me in my wardrobe it would be a little bit more versatile so I did this is um the dk is the uh, yorkshire spinners the croft and kova and i held that together with a murky depths boucle which is a so that was a hundred percent wool and then the boucle which is um shucks it's an alpaca and silk blend so i held those two together um, to get uh, the gauge that I wanted. If I'm being honest, I didn't swatch for it. I've done, a, I think I've said this before. I've done a few of Stephen West sweaters, and so I know like what his gauge is, what my gauge is, knitting his stuff, and so I can just like cast on and go, which honestly is really nice. I made the third size in this sweater. Um, so it has this really big cowl neck oh yes giving Belle running to jump on a horse to save her father at the end of Beauty and the Beast um <laughs> disaster uh so it has this really huge cowl that can be worn down I've seen some people pull it down over their shoulders I've seen people knit this a little bit longer so that it's a dress um you can just like pop this up over your head if you need to be having a dramatic moment maybe with the sunglasses maybe you're being incognito going to the grocery store you don't want to see anyone um so for this i also so a couple modifications i added two extra stitches once i split for sleeves and the body just to give it a little more boxy of a fit actually i have a photo of myself in it i was prepared i'll pop that in there um so you can see and for the sleeves, um, there's a certain point after you do your decreases and then you knit, 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 uh, that you're supposed to switch to a smaller needle to like do continue the ribbing because this is all just ribbing. Honey, the amount of ribbing that was on this sweater, sweet Mary. Um, it's all ribbing, so it would tighten up the ribbing around the wrist, and I didn't want that, so I just stayed with the needles that I'd started with once I picked up the sleeve. So it's giving like 2015 Ariana Grande sleeves, which I love. So they like aren't fitted, it's just loose and I love that. Um, it gives a different look for the sweater as well, um, for me. Um, yeah, I love it. I'm super excited about it. It got rid of um, some yarn that I had in stash for a minute. I think both actually well the the DK I had for a little while and the boucle like I think I bought maybe two years ago so it was nice to like use those in combination together um, to get them out of my stash I absolutely love the color I love how it looks I love how it feels the fabric is really nice I wore it out to the theater while we were on our road trip and I felt cute <laughs> So it's nice to like wear it out and like be like, oh, okay, cool. This is how it wears um, in real life and not just me walking in my apartment with it on. Does that make sense? All right, so those are my FOs. Shall we 
get into some whips? Let's do it. So whip number one, um, on our drive back, I um, decided to cast on another pair of socks. I have this little bag. Someone gifted me this. I'm so sorry. I don't remember who it is right now at the top of my head. Um, and this has had yarn sitting in it since the last time I worked with this yarn. And I was like, oh, at some point I'll go back and I'll use that yarn again for other socks. Um, of course, I don't have the label, but it is this fun sort of confetti looking yarn. I know it's nitpicks. I believe it's stroll. Um, I want to say that it's like birthday something, but I could be wrong. Who knows? And I'm using some bare uh nitpicks felici um to go with it for the heels toes and cuffs so i'm taking these two since i already have a pair of socks out of these i'm just i wanted to use up the rest of the the yarn so i'm, not, I'm actually not sure how long they're going to be they might be like they're going to be longer than ankle socks but they might not be full socks if that makes sense anyway here's how they're knitting up super fun just very colorful something vibrant and bright uh these are again on us ones i started toe up to do the so i started with the the bare yarn to do the toe and i went up to 68 stitches and then once i got there i did like one round maybe one round um of the bear and then I switched to the main color and so I'll just continue sort of making a tube with these until the yarn runs out and once it's done I'll go back in and I will do an afterthought heel using that bear yarn as well and I'll do the cuffs in the bear too so these will be fun I'll have like a cousin pair of socks for the other socks that I have those are ankle socks so pretty small and I think I only did, I actually don't remember. I think I did the heels and toes with that, but not the cuff, because I think I did those top down. So these are toe up. It'll be a little bit nicer. I can just knit, 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 knit until the yarn runs out of both balls. And then, yeah, finish it off with the cuff. Nothing really exciting about those. They, they shouldn't take too long because it's not a full skein of yarn. And these can now go into my backpack and be my commuting knitting. So I'm really excited about that. I love having a small project on the needles. I have like eight other ones that I wanna, not socks, but just like small projects that I want to <laughs> rotate out as I'm commuting coming up. We can talk about those in the next episode because I have a feeling I'm gonna cast one of them on hopefully soon. All right, the second thing I have for you is, I mean, you've already seen a finished one, but I started, oh my gosh, a lento for myself. So I can do this. I'm using this, oh my gosh, you can't see it because it's so blown up. This Rowan felted tweed, it is a DK. Um, and it is 50% merino wool, 25% alpaca, 25% viscose. And I got this from a friend's friend who was doing a D stash and was getting rid of a bunch of stuff. I took a bunch of sweater quantities of things, cause why not? So this was one of them. And I'm holding that together or pairing it with um, the Knit Picks Aloft. Um, so they're mohair silk in the colorway labyrinth now when i left to go on this little road trip i had one ball of that labyrinth and so i just took a couple skeins of the felted tweed and i was like let me just see how far i can get with what i have and <laughs> i got almost through the entire yoke um well i started the ribbing and i did the short rows the day before we left and then on the car ride I went through and I got through most of the yoke um, and I had to order more so it was that the yarn that I was waiting for was also coming with the yarn for my other roommates cardigan that I'm gonna be making and I was like oh well when I get back home hopefully it'll be there and sure enough when I got back the package was here so I just connected the, another ball and just did like two rounds of it but 
here's where I am with mine. Hopefully nothing will fall off. So, ooh, I love the color. So in the last episode, I said that I was getting 16. So I did my gauge swatch. I was getting 16 stitches using the DK and the mohair. The pattern calls for 15 stitches for gauge. Um, and I think I said, oh, it's going to be a little bit bigger, which that's not true. It meant that it was going to be a little bit smaller. So I went in and I just looked at the numbers and I picked which size. I think I'm doing the fifth size maybe. Um, like the 50 and did the math and it is gonna end up being about 47 which will give me about four inches of positive ease um, for the finished garment fingers crossed hopefully <laughs> so this is how this is knitting up I think it's really beautiful it's super subtle the tweety bits in it because of the mohair I don't know if you can see some of them but I like the way that the two yarns are playing together for this one I am doing, let me see if I can move some of the stitches around. I am doing the increases for the raglan that the way that they're supposed to be. So you can sort of see there, it's just a regular, if that makes sense, uh, make ones on either side of the raglan little line. And yeah, it's, it's going, I'm about six, rows away from splitting for sleeves which is crazy once i get there um because the pattern is the way it's written i'm gonna make sure that i check to see that the yoke depth is something that will fit my body um so i may have to once i finish the increases for the the raglan just do a couple rounds just to deepen the yoke a little bit but I don't know, as of right now, it looks like it'll be fine. I'm gonna just do the next six rows and then figure all that out. Split first sleeves and then do a couple rounds. And I think with this one, I'm going to do my sleeves first um, because unlike the first one I did, uh, my arms are really long. And so I just wanna get that out of the way, especially after doing this one where it was all ribbing. I was like, this is a lot of ribbing. Should've done this first. So I did. And this is just plain stockinette, so I want to get that out of the way, and then I can mindlessly go through and finish the body. Um, yeah, so that's my lento. I'm really excited about it. I think it's going to be great. The neck looks a little bit big, but I always think that um, when I start something, and so I think it's going to be fine in the end. I love the color. I have another sweater that's sort of similar, my anchor sweater. It's all good. I'm in a green green vibe lately and I'm just rolling with it <laughs> so those are my whips uh, next thing to be cast on is I'm going to start since that package came I'm gonna start my other roommates spice cardigan which is by Andrew Mowry I have the pattern here I think yeah so this is the spice cardigan I'm gonna be starting this hopefully soon using some nitpicks and actually let me just leave this out since I need that um, using some nitpicks and some yarn hero I think I showed both of those in the last episode when I showed the swatch that I made for us to pick which was going to be the main color for the body of the cardigan because the yarn hero oh which is right here um, is sort of like that spin cycle or sort of like spin cycle yarn or hand spun yarn so it's, it does a subtle color change um, so it'll be used with this and I think the gray is going to work really beautifully with that so that's that all right the last thing I have to show, share with you all is I got a couple acquisitions while I was gone I was searching for a yarn shop and found this shop that wasn't a shop if that makes sense but like it was it wasn't like a brick and mortar and it was like its own thing um and talking to the owner i believe her name is whitney um their shop had, had a fire or something so they had to move out and so now they're in a space that was it was called arrow um and it's it's a 
like creative space for a bunch of different people. So there were like people who made jewelry. There was a class for kids going on in like the back area for painting. This little yarn sh shop was in there. Um, there's some other clothing stuff. So it's like little booths almost that you can walk around and get wares and um, stationery, cards, like all sorts of things. It was just like makers. Really dope. We walked in the rain to get there. I felt kind of bad. <laughs> I was like, I need to go here before we leave. Um, and so the name of the shop was called um, Fiber Arts Shop. And so this is local in Memphis. This is the tag of the store. And so I picked up a couple things while I was there. So this first one is by Raven Moon Dye Works. So there's their little tag. And this is 75% uh, Superwash Merino, 15% Nylon, 10% Silver um, Stellina. And it's 400 and. 35 yards for 100 grams and this color is called grandma's quilt so it's a lot of blues and then some fun oh my gosh what am i doing some fun yellows and speckles in there so i thought this was really neat i've never worked with anything that had selena in it before and so i thought why not give it a try so this is really cool they are out of tennessee this company yes um, they're out of Tennessee, check them out. The second thing I picked up was from Ada Loves Laces. This is also a fingering Stellina. Um, the color is Wathan. And yeah, this is uh, 462 yards for 100 grams. And it's 70, 25, 5. So Superwash Merino Nylon Stellina. And I just thought this was really pretty. The sparkle in it is kind of major, but it's these really beautiful teals and yellows and a little bit of green in there. And so I thought that was fun. I asked if it's striped and she said not really, um, just because of the way that it was dyed. But I think these will make for a pretty cool pair of socks regardless. Yeah, they even have the dye lot on here. So this is from 20, January 22nd of 2022. How fun. So that was that one. And then my last, there. this company's out of Tennessee too. And then this last one is Gems Lux Fibers and they are out of Mississippi, um, which I didn't realize cause geography that like so many states around there along the Mississippi, like we're so close together. Like my friend was like, yeah, we used to like drive to Mississippi to like go to the outlet mall. And I was like, wait, what? Oh, okay cool i guess i placed memphis somewhere else within the state but yikes so this is gems lux fibers and this is their lux sock so it's 75 percent superwash merino 25 percent nylon and 436 yards and this color is called autumn equinox i love this it's orange i love orange um with these little blips of the dark browns and blacks I think this will make for something really beautiful. I thought socks, but maybe it'll be cool in a shawl. Um, yeah. So those are my purchases while we were there. The last thing I got, which is a little bit of piecemeal, is from my buddies over at Needles at the Ready. They went to Vogue Knitting Live and they saw one of my favorite dyers, who is Murky Depths, Debbie. Um, there and so they were they talked to her picked up some stuff if you've seen their last episode and they sent me over a couple things too because they are lovely humans so this is the deep sock um it's 80 percent superwash merino 20 percent nylon we love an 80 20 around here uh, and this is the colorway salted caramel and that's 400 yards and then this one is the harbor base and so that's a hundred percent superwash merino it's a singles it's also 400 yards and this is called tadpole alley this is like bleh, so good <laughs> really beautiful blues and greens so those will end up being this will end up going in a shawl for sure so yeah 
good times adding to the nest around me i feel like some of these cubbies that have like fun little knick-knacky things are soon going to have to be transferred into more cubbies for more yarn and who am i to fight that just fill them up <laughs> this is what i say uh all right so that's all the fun yarny goodness the last thing i have for you all for this episode is a music recommendation this recommendation is coming because i follow a lot of music things and saw that it was celebrating its 25th anniversary on the 22nd of february and so my music rec for this week is oh, the lights madonna's ray of light this album reminds me of um going to ballet summer camp <laughs> when i was a child and this album came out and i was just jamming around to it um really good i would recommend from this album the title track ray of light obviously um nothing really matters is a bop and the last song i will pick is little star we'll do a down tempo song um so that's ray of light nothing really matters little star off of madonna's ray of light album so good so fun shake your body move around good times all right you all i think that is it for me for this episode if you are new and you enjoyed what you saw you can do all that fun youtube stuff like comment subscribe um, and if you are already subscribed, you know the drill. I will be back in about two weeks uh, to give you an update on what I've been working on. Um, until then, I hope everyone... Uh, it's raining here, so if it's raining where you are, stays dry. Um, <laughs> and you find a moment to just take some time to yourself and craft something beautiful. So until I see you next time, make a piece, spread some peace.